Welcome to the MyPax Dental Enterprise Viewer and User Training. The MyPax software suite boasts feature flexibility to complement the industry standard DICOM client server model. To launch the MyPax Viewer, double click this icon on your desktop. Before you can acquire images, you must first find the patient record. You can search on patient ID, patient name, series description, and when the images were taken. Once you have filled out the criteria for your search, select the search button to retrieve your results. You may then select the correct record from the results window and select open patient to open the record. Once the patient record is open, you will want to ensure you have the correct patient open by looking at the title bar at the top of the screen. Sometimes a patient will not have an existing record in MyPax. Always attempt to search for a patient record first before creating a new record. If, after searching, the patient does not already exist, you can create a new patient record directly from the search window. Select New Patient and input the patient ID, first name, last name, gender, and date of birth to create the new record. You can use the graphical interface to find the correct date or you can simply type the date in. Always be sure to check the information is displayed correctly at the top of the screen after creating the new record. Once a patient record is open and you're ready to capture images, you must first select a blank template. Select a template from the drop-down menu and click the Show Template button. Once the template appears on the screen, you may now activate the corresponding plugin for the sensor you wish to take images with. The images will appear in the template frames in the order you capture them in. Here are examples of our plugins that support various brands of devices. In the event a different template is required after images have been taken and they are still unapproved, simply select a new template from the drop-down menu and select Remount Current Series. Then left-click and drag images into their appropriate spots in the new template. You may then take more images to complete the new series. Once a series is ready to be approved and stored to the DICOM server, click the Save button. Enter in a custom description if you would like, the referring physician, and click Approve. If a user with limited permissions is trying to approve the images, a prompt will appear requesting a user with approval rights to sign off on the series. When saving a periapical series, it is good practice to add additional information to the series description. This will allow users to identify more easily what is contained in a particular set of images. 
The periapical templates are not equipped with the anatomical information predefined. Therefore, when saving images in a PA template, you may be prompted to define the required anatomic information. To accomplish this, select each image, then specify the appropriate anatomic description from the drop-down menu. Additionally, this will fill in the correct laterality, region, and modifier based on your selection. If, after attempting to save the series, you happen to forget to specify the anatomic information for one or more images, you can easily identify which images still need additional information by the red dog ear in the upper left hand corner of the image. After capturing images in a template, if you wish to retake an image without deleting the current images, you may left click and drag an image from the template down to the overflow area. This will allow you to retake the image without losing the original. Images in the overflow area save along with the images in the template. Because of this, Images in the overflow area must have their anatomic information specified in order for the entire series to save. The series view is a list of available image studies on the left side of the viewer's screen. Each series is represented by an icon indicating a different state. A red dog ear indicates an unapproved series. A black background with a gold drum indicates an approved series that has been permanently stored to the DICOM server. A gray background with a gold drum indicates a series that can be retrieved from the DICOM server. To rotate an image 90 degrees, first left click the image to select it. You will notice the border of the image turns blue to indicate that it is selected. Next click the rotate button on the toolbar to rotate the image. You can then proceed to the next image by selecting it and clicking the rotate button again. To adjust the brightness and contrast of an image, select the toolbar icon that looks like a sun. This will display the brightness and contrast dialog. You can use this dialog to adjust the brightness and contrast by dragging around the red dot inside of the dialog. You can also highlight multiple images by holding down Control A which will allow you to adjust the brightness and contrast of all images currently selected. The latest version of the MyPax Viewer offers some more advanced image filters to aid in diagnosis. They are the Dentin to Enamel Junction, Endodontic, and Periodontal filters. The DEJ filter can be used to help measure bone density differences between a tooth enamel and dentin. It can also provide better viewing of caries. The endodontic filter can be used to highlight root morphology.
The periodontal filter can be used to highlight soft tissue. The stretch histogram feature can also be used to adjust brightness and contrast with a bit more control of the image data. Select the stretch histogram button and manipulate the edges of the red box in the histogram dialog to alter the range of blacks and whites in the image. To swap the black and white image data, select the Invert Image button on the toolbar. The Optimize Brightness tool changes the brightness setting to be optimal for a selected area of the image. With this button selected, left click and drag a selection of a particular area of interest. The Equalization tool is used to assist with diagnosis. To use this tool, select the Equalization button from the toolbar. Then, move the mouse over an image and a circular selection will be affected as you move the mouse around. You can use the mouse wheel to enlarge or shrink the selection circle. Select the Colorize button on the toolbar to convert the black and white image to color. This may aid in diagnosis. The Edge Enhancement tool reduces the blurry edges to crisp, sharp edges. To use this tool, select an image and then click on the arrow beside the Edge Enhancement button to select the amount of sharpness. This effect is cumulative, so caution is suggested. It can be used excessively and ruin the diagnostic quality of an image. The mock effect refers to an optical phenomenon where the inbuilt edge enhancement mechanism of the retina, where the edges of darker objects next to lighter objects will appear lighter and vice versa, create a false shadow or mock band in a radiograph. Mock bands generally manifest adjacent to metal restorations or appliances and the boundary between enamel and dentin. This effect has been attributed as a source of diagnostic error in radiology. By covering up the lighter object, such as a restoration, with a black square, one can reduce this effect and see the actual shade of gray present within the image pixel data without the brain trying to enhance the differentiation. For optimal results, the black square in the mock effect correction tool should be angled parallel to the edge of the object and sized accordingly to cover it up. To use the Mock Effect tool, select the Mock Effect button from the toolbar. This will display the Mock Effect dialog, which you can place anywhere on the image to help with diagnosis. You can adjust the size of the Mock Effect tool using the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can also adjust the rotation of the Mock Effect tool by holding the right mouse button down. With the magnifier button activated, left click and drag across an image to magnify the selection. With the zoom button depressed, 
There are two ways to zoom into an image. You can left click and drag out a selection on an image to zoom into an area of interest. You can also left click anywhere on the image to zoom into the currently targeted area. If you wish to return the zoomed image back to fit the frame, select the Fit Image to Frame button. There are a couple of different ways to compare series in the MyPacks viewer. The first is the Presentation Overview mode. The Presentation Overview utilizes the clipboard to select which images you would like to use. Because of this, you will want to first clear the clipboard before selecting any images to use. Select Edit Clear Clipboard from the menu to remove all images from the clipboard. After the clipboard has been cleared, right-click on any image and select Copy to add it to the Windows clipboard. Repeat this process for as many images as you would like to compare simultaneously, from as many series as you would like. Select the Presentation Overview button to display all copied images on screen at once. If you would like to see a single image from the display, simply left click the image to expand it. To exit the Presentation Overview, you can hit Escape on your keyboard or click anywhere in the black area on the screen. You can also compare more than one series at once in the MyPax viewer. Simply hold down the control key while left clicking multiple series in the series view. As you select the series, they will start to appear in the compare window. Within the compare window, you can move and resize images freely. When exiting the Compare mode, the MyPax viewer will always prompt you to save the current view. The MyPax viewer can be calibrated for approximate measurements. The ruler tool can be used to left click and draw a line measurement across the image. The multi-line ruler works in much the same way. Each time the mouse is clicked while dragging, an extra point is added so that the perimeter of the selection can be measured. After you are done tracing the perimeter, simply right click to display the measurement. Various informational overlays or annotations can be applied to the image. These can be in the form of lines and pointers indicating an area of interest and also text-based descriptions. Annotations are not embedded in the image and can be toggled on and off by selecting the annotation button on the toolbar or selecting the blue icon in the upper right hand corner of the image. Once an image has been stored to the DICOM server, it can no longer be permanently altered. However, you can still modify the image for viewing purposes.
If you would like to save the changes, you can still accomplish this by selecting the Save button, but the series will be saved as an additional derived series. You will be prompted to save the series as a derived series or a local copy. Local copies, unlike derived series, cannot be stored to the DICOM server. After a derived series has been saved, it will always appear above the original series in the series view. The MyPax viewer can also print images. Select a series or individual images and click the printer icon on the toolbar. You can change the orientation of the printouts as well as the number of copies to be printed. You will also need to select a source to determine what will be printed. Be sure to select current series layout to print out the images as they appear in the template view. Otherwise, each image will be printed on one whole page, potentially wasting ink. After you have selected your source, you can select from the numerous options to print the patient info, apply a white background, print a customized logo, or only print images mounted in the template. The MyPax viewer is capable of importing both DICOM and non-DICOM image files. To import a non-DICOM image, you will first need to have a patient record open and a template selected. Select Image, Import Images, and click the Browse button. Navigate to the image or images you wish to import. You can use Control A to select all the images in a particular folder or Control to select multiple images. After the images have been selected, click the Open button. Here you can scroll through each of the images to ensure your selection is accurate. Select the OK button to finalize the import. After the images have entered the MyPax viewer, it may be necessary to rotate them to the proper orientation. You can also rearrange the images and adjust the brightness and contrast if necessary. Once you are satisfied with the image layout, you will want to ensure the series description and date and time are accurate. If they are not, you can alter them in the Properties pane. After all changes have been made, you can now save the series to the DICOM server by selecting the Save icon from the toolbar and clicking Approve. DICOM images can be imported into MyPax as well. Since DICOM images already contain patient information, you do not necessarily need to have a patient open prior to importing. However, if the DICOM images came from another system, there is a good chance they will not have the most current patient information. 
Because of this, we encourage you to have the correct patient open prior to importing. Once the patient record is open, select Image, Import Images. Then select Browse to select the DICOM files. You can use Control A to select all files in the folder. After all DICOM files have been selected, select Open to proceed. The Import dialog will now display the patient demographics of the DICOM files in the upper right hand corner of the screen. To update the patient information for the imported DICOM files, select the Save All on Currently Selected Patient checkbox. This will overwrite the patient demographics with the currently selected patient. Once this box is checked, select OK. You will receive a message informing you of the changes about to be made to the files. Select OK to finalize the import. The DICOM files have now been imported into MyPax and will appear in the series view by date captured in the correct sequence. The MyPax viewer also allows the exporting of images. To export images, select Image, Export Images. The Export Images dialog is very similar to the Print dialog. First, you will want to select a destination folder. You can use the Browse button to help navigate to the appropriate folder. Next, select the file format for the exported images to be saved as. After you have selected the file format, it is time to decide what images you would like to export under the Source option. The current series layout option produces a single image that matches the template you are currently viewing. All other options produce a single file for each image in the selection. If you wish to attach the exported images to an email message, you can select this action under the Options section. This will automatically open your email client and attach the exported image files directly to the email. After you have made your selections on the export dialog, select OK to initiate the export. Thank you for watching the MyPax Dental Enterprise Viewer and User Training.